What's up everybody? This is a printer update. Um, so I did a whole bunch of videoing. It looked like a bunch of chaos. Didn't really give much of an explanation of each individual part and so I'm going to give you a quick uh, rundown of the uh, of the extruder um, modifications that I've done. So currently I've printed out this uh, bracket here um, on the upgraded parts and here this piece and this is the new uh, pieces for the extruder um, the parts that hold everything together it's pretty cool whoever designed these designed them as like machine parts we got all the empty cavities and stuff I modified this one quite a lot to fit my uh, particular needs but um, but I did modify the back so it's kinda cool the way that looks um, so with that said, the extruder currently is just hanging up here. Turn these lights on, I'll be able to see it better. Currently just hanging up here. And uh, so this component actually slips on the face of the motor like this. And I have these uh, holes on the outside and the back. And then a, a little spot to put a bracket on the top and the bottom. So I'm actually going to be holding the the string that goes up to the top and goes around the top that's going to be right here in this slot and then I'm going to put a single pin down to the center because this double string deal that I've got right here this ain't working out the way I think um, so I reprinted this part and I'm using fittings now so I, I did happen to have these fittings and they fit this hose perfect um, took them off something else and uh, this nut right here is what's currently holding in this plastic tube and you just screw it in there and it does a pretty good job until everything gets under tension and it'll actually push itself out of that nut uh, so these do not allow that to happen um, took a Dremel and cleaned these things up top to bottom and uh, they look brand new but man they look like trash when I was first first dug them out of the bin of junk um, other than that um, I will probably end up 3D printing this bracket um, and then this bracket and then 3D printing a little holder for uh, for something different um, and then I'll machine some steel down to get the proper weight once all the components and everything are on there I'll just weigh them. Um, the other thing is is when this moves all the way around um, you know this gets some flex going on it kind of has to move freely and uh, that's important and uh, there we go, it's hot. So um, I'm currently starting a print. It didn't like me touching it. <laughs> it says, put me back where I was. Anyway, the rubber bands are a test. I'm going to actually be using the, uh, the stretchy rubber band cord. Um, it's back here, the stuff I used for the uh, O-band for my uh, Hawk coil winder. Right, this stretchy... Uh, the stretchy bead band stuff. I, th I think I'm going to actually use it. And this stuff looks pretty thick. I might get smaller stuff. Um, but this is that stretchy cord. I don't even know if this is the original one I bought. Maybe not. I think it is because it's so thick. But you can buy this in a thinner manner. Um, and I'll see how stretchy this is. If it's not stretchy enough, then I'll go with the thinner stuff. And um, instead of the rubber bands, this stuff will last. So this is a perfect. Uh, um, use for this stretchy string cord stuff pretty cool stuff. This stuff uh, reminds me of some belting, some old belting at my previous previous um, job, so like three jobs ago uh, the big O bands that we used um, that you can uh, vulcanize together this is almost the exact material except this stuff is a lot more stretchy and you almost couldn't break that stuff. You almost can't break this stuff by hand. You can cut it but that's about it so anyway, um, so instead of the little magnetic bracket that I've got currently, you know that's going to be that's going to be replaced, and um, along with the uh, the weights and stuff. But anyway, I, I think this is working out very well. Um, so that's just a, a current extruder update, and I will actually be uh, printing out the rest of these parts. And when I'm done and I've got it disassembled, um, I'll show you what it looks like. Got a little slop going on there. Anyway, alright, well, we'll speak soon and uh, 
when this part's done, I'll show you what it looks like. Alright boys and girls, so the I want to thread this piece in here and um, I actually reamed it out a lot deeper than it was originally but the tap I'm using does not go in there far enough to get these threaded in there very well. So what I've decided to do is I'm actually going to just heat up the fitting a little bit. Hopefully there's no uh, um, rubber that's going to be damaged in there. So I'm going to heat the fitting up a little bit and I want to thread it on there while it's warm. This was the same thing I did a while back with the uh, uh, with the other fittings and those fittings were uh, the little uh, thread, thread in I can't remember what they're called but you thread them in there and I heated them up and just pushed them in there and then you have threads in there so I decided to do it this way It does not look very straight, but uh, but it will do. It's not bad. Made some marks with the vise, so kind of poo pooed that up. <laughs> All right, well, that's that. All right, well, I said once I, this print is done. Show you what it looks like, and uh, we're at 90%. It's only 34 minutes, so I presume it will be here, be done here in just a second. I'll let it cool down, and we'll pop it off. I'll tell you what, just having the extruder uh, haggardly mounted up here, this close to the hot end, with the retract being that good, makes the prints turn out so, so, so much cleaner. Um, I actually don't even need to really mess around with the uh, cutting all the strings off, etc, etc. Check out how, check out how clean the uh, little strings down in there. Usually there's always strings and stuff. So, cool. Alright, so in this little clip I'm actually just showing you the bearing I put in here and the little piece that goes over top of that inserting the pen and uh, just generically showing you how it fits together and it seems to function just peachy alright so this little clip I'm actually just showing you that I did take the brush and drilled a hole made a little uh, white piece uh, that is a shim with a hole in it and that's just basically my brush attachment so that the uh, particles get pushed out same way I did my original um, extruder motor setup so put it all together seems like it's gonna work well okay everybody I've completely finished the assembly of the new extruder module and I really like the way this is. You can see the spring right there. Um, this is uh, spring tensioned. So you just push it down and releases the, uh, I know it doesn't move much, it's because everything's so tight tolerances. But you push that down and you can feed the uh, plastic into the inside. Threaded fittings on both sides. I went ahead and left this interesting threaded fitting here which threads on the top of, uh, of there. And that's so I can actually turn this freely on this tube and uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't come off the tube 
and it's very difficult to get the tube off so I'd rather do it that way. Um, I added this knob on here just so I can manually turn it. It's something I've always wanted to add to this and I never could fit it on there. Uh, so if we do, let's see, extrude 20 at uh, 500 and here we go. Now, one of the tests that I really would like to do okay I'm going to cut that flush I'm going to say extrude a hundred millimeters and it's going to feed through a hundred millimeters And I'm going to cut it flush again. I'm going to measure this and see if it is 100 millimeters. And if not, then I can adjust for that. This looks to be 97.74. So I can go in here. Maybe, maybe not. Well, I'll have to adjust that later, but. Um, anyway, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to adjust that until I get it just right. And then I'll know that my plastic is coming out at the correct rate. And uh, yeah, so that's what I got. I'm going to mount everything up here. I'm going to weigh this and uh, get my counterbalance right and go from there. Alrighty then, so here we are. We're testing a print right now. Um, so what I did is I used this, uh, this stretchy cord stuff and I went ahead and just used some uh, standard crimp on ends. I took the, uh, the plastic off but uh, used the crimp on ends and didn't overkill it, just crimped them enough to hold them on there and yeah, that's working well um, the only thing I got left to do is the bottom tie point of my extruder down to the um, to the end here I could just leave it like this because actually this hose works fine but I think I'm going to add this cord uh, back on there kind of like I had it to help hold the uh, extruder weight kind of center it a little more but anyway these little cords work well um, you know they're they're just tight enough to where they got some play in them mm, this one's tight this one's tight I may uh, tighten this one a fraction more and uh, yeah yeah I probably should about like that and then it'll hold it nice and steady. So there you go. That's it. And then I'm going to 3D print some brackets for up here and we'll finish this video. I think I'll do that on the end of this video. And if you're not making a mess, well, you're not getting anything done. Really screws I took apart from the stuff I scrapped back home when I moved here. I <laughs> love it. Okay then, I decided to opt out on the rigid string and since this stuff is pretty stiff but still stretchy um, this still allows for some uh, extra flexibility um, so I just added that there uh, let's see if you can see it just screwed it on down there with a screw into the hole and uh, that's it so this uh, does, you know, cause a little bit of an issue at the very tip, but I normally don't ever print, you know, any higher than that, so. Okay, that's the end of this extruder extraordinaire. I do like this uh, manual adjustment. I'm going to add a bit of a stiffer spring on here, I think, um, to keep a little bit more tension on that uh, plastic, but other than that, I'm done.
All right, Russ out. Hope you enjoyed that one. That was an interesting video. Peace.